so in this video we will discuss the importance of some of the numbers which we discussed in the previous part as well as what inferences a investor can get from these numbers the first aspect is the migration from unorganized sector to organized sector we saw this chart in the last part where you could have seen that the unorganized sector that is the standalone centers and hospital based centers collectively command a share of 84 percentage so this would look like they are dominating the business but if you look at the data the other way 15 years back when there was no organized present or any diagnostic chains this unorganized sector was completely having the 100% of the market share in this last 15 to 20 years this 100 has become 84 percentage means they have lost 15 to 16% to the organized market segment which is roughly around 1% market share every year so as a investor i would like to know whether the same trend will continue that is roughly 1% a year from unorganized to organized such a movement is possible or 10 years down the line what would be the market share between the organized and the unorganized to understand better how or how much fast it can happen let us understand a few business dynamics or the drivers which will facilitate this migration the first aspect is the migration from standalone centers to diagnostic chains we saw that standalone centers are mostly single lab and run by a individual so they are not in a position to invest much on technology to create apps online registration to view the results online etc also their volumes are very less due to which the cost structure is very high that is the cost per unit test is very high remember if you in the part 2 we saw that uh, we discussed about something called as reagents play important dynamics in the pathology segment so we will definitely see in the coming uh, parts why this cost structure is high for standalone centers due to these reagents so that let me reserve it for the future uh, uh, parts and moving on there is it's not going to be a complete wipe off like uh, diagnostic chains having 100% and standalone centers having 0% it's not going to happen like that but there is they are going to coexist and a new working models or partnerships will involve in the coming years which we need to wait and watch it could be more like these standalone centers can have type with diagnostic chains and or standalone centers can be a sort of a collection center for diagnostic chain and many other possibilities are there which we need to wait and watch the second aspect is migration from hospitals to diagnostic chains this is a very unique uh, business where or unique or traditional business where a patient goes to a hospital and a doctor refers some test and the patients have to do the test compulsorily in the hospital so this hospitals have a unique advantage of captive patients or customers both inpatient as well as outpatient so continuing the migration of hospital to diagnostic chain the hospitals have a pricing power so they will charge a premium from patient because it is known that they can't uh, go outside to other laboratories say if a test is going to cost some 300 rupees uh, in outside lab or a diagnostic chain in the hospital slightly command a premium say 330 rupees or so and even if hospitals have low volumes and their cost structure is higher they can manage to pass on this higher cost to their customers that is the patients coming to the last aspect we saw in part 1 there was something called as tertiary hospitals which are highly advanced and does the uh, major transplants and so on the tertiary hospitals have a very low volumes which does not 
make it economically viable for them to buy a advanced equipment and do all the testing so the tertiary hospitals will send their samples to the diagnostic centers then coming to the final and the last dimension that is migration from regional to pan india chains this is a migration within the organized sector see we saw in the organized sector there are two varieties one is the regional uh, diagnostic chains another one is the pan india diagnostic chains so here we are talking about movement or migration of customers or patients from the regional chains to the pan india chains the regional chains already have a very strong hold in the cities where they are and they enjoy a trust factor with the medical community or the doctors in their respective regions remember that this trust does not develop overnight it was built over the years they have formed a relationship or a partnership with the medical community or the doctors such that the doctors will refer the test to the to their lab so this is a bit hard to break so pan india chains opening their new labs or centers dominated by regional chains will definitely find it difficult to break this trust while it is difficult it is not impossible it would take a few years for the pan india chains to gain grounds and investors need to have patience till this story can play out the pan india chains have a different business model that is hub and spoke business model about uh, invest in logistics it and technology and so on where uh, by investment in technology people can download their um, results or book online etc all these regional chains are also now adopting they are copying the same technology or business model they can bring in more money and these regional chains are doing the same so it's going to be an interesting space to watch in the coming years as to how this migration from the regional centers to pan india chains is going to happen do not worry about many new terms which come across like hub and spoke model logistic it and technology and so on please stay with me all this will be covered in the uh, future parts and how important or what significance these carry in the business model of a diagnostic chain and a stand alone center the other data point what we saw in our last part was that the prescriptive uh, diagnostics command a 92% of the market share whereas the preventive diagnostics have around 8% of the market share so prescriptive diagnostics is something which is applicable to acute illness means the patient is unwell he goes to hospital doctor recommends some test and based on the test he does a treatment and once the patient is recovered there is no further treatment or testing required whereas in the case of preventive diagnostics it is applicable to chronic illness where people need to repeatedly do a test to monitor their parameters to avoid any future complications or any abnormal conditions so like people would be repeatedly uh, testing for uh, sugar values or cardiology perspective they may check the values of fat i mean that uh, cholesterol values cholesterol values or in the case of some thyroid complications people regularly monitor their thyroid levels and accordingly take the tablets if it is less or more they called as hypo or hyperthyroidism accordingly people uh, are administered some tablets and in such cases these tests need to be done repeatedly there are also packages where uh, they of uh, they offer a complete uh, blood uh, analysis and give a, a results covering some 50 100 or 200 parameters and seeing that a doctor can identify any possible future complexities so typically the preventive diagnostics consist of direct walk in customers where they know what the test they are supposed to do and they know what is the limit of the test as well in india the preventive diagnostics has been mostly from out of the pocket where i pay for the test in contrary to the 
insurance based model in the other countries any change in this model where insurance company would pay for the test or the preventive test would give a would be a game changer in future in the preventive diagnostic segment within disturb players thyro care is more focused into the preventive and wellness segment where most of the revenue comes from this segment as mr velmuni says in one of the interview people buy car house and then to enjoy these luxuries people start looking for good health that's where preventive maintenance will come into picture the other data point what we saw was that the pathology was having a market share of 58% when compared to radiology of 42% so what are the reason why this pathology was predominant the main reason is that the pathology based test is the first line of test which is done by or which is recommended by the doctors to diagnose the illness they usually start from a blood test or a urine test and um, they proceed with the treatment and also the routine or uh, the average price of a routine radiology test like mri could be somewhere 3 to 4 times higher than a uh, routine test which is done in pathology and also within pathology when diagnosing a sickness it is usually not one or two tests it's a bundle of three or four tests which a doctor recommends to conduct and again this test is conducted in multiple stages like once a patient enters uh, goes to a doctor to diagnose he conducts the does the test then during medication to see the effectiveness of medication the test is done again and finally uh, to confirm whether the patient has completely recovered the test is being done again this apart the pathology and the radiology uh, business have a few uh, predominant um, differences like one is scalability and the business model in pathology you can follow the hub and spoke model where you collect the samples from a patient transport the samples to a central lab anywhere in mumbai or delhi to conduct the test and that that way pathology test can be scaled very easily there as a radiology test the patient has to present himself or herself in front of the radiologist by going to the lab so the hub and spoke business model is not possible in radiology nor is it easy to scale and the other predominant differences for a pathology uh, labs there is no mandatory regulations uh, a few voluntary regulations are there but in case of radiology there are some mandatory regulations which are applicable so in the next video we will understand more about the diagnostic industry ecosystem what are the different components or the different players forming the diagnostic industry ecosystem and how they relate to one another Thank you.